Hey, what's up, everybody? This is a cast from the Stormgate beta submitted by one of my viewers. This is Arrowvit versus Gil. Arrowvit in the top, Gil here in the bottom. Infernal versus Infernal. Um, this was a high-ranked uh, diamond match, um, and let's get into it. By the way, guys, if you like this kind of content, please like and subscribe. I'm going to be doing a lot of casts, guides, um, uh, all sorts of stuff Stormgate related, and we also make it a lot of other cool RTS and esports related content. So. Um, definitely do that. You're also always welcome to join me on my Twitch stream where I cast these games live with my community. So right off the bat, we're seeing um, structures being built not on the uh, outside here where the natural is, but instead on the inside. Um, it does appear to be double tech. I'm assuming this is going to be vault and conclave um, here for Aerovit, but I, I could be wrong. There's no way for me to actually select the structure and see what the building is in the alpha. Uh, and we may have just the uh, similar pairing here. Whoa, actually, a possible three. So maybe a double conclave in Vault. That's usually mathematically what adds up and makes sense when you're trying to play. Um, in this map, I should point out that uh, there are siege tanks that can be captured that can force for a push. When you kill these siege camps, it spawns a catapult uh, with its own pathing that beelines towards the opponent's base. It'll attack units or structures. Um, now, Infernal versus Infernal... There's a couple different ideas at play here. Um, but generally speaking, we've seen a lot more success from players who are aggressive than players who fast expand. Although, um, with the big Stormgate beta tournament coming up, and I will also be casting, some of it's already happened, but I'll be casting some of that later on. We'll see what actually proves to be the best. Um, but for now, it does seem like in a lot of these matchups, it just makes sense to power up and then get aggressive uh, with your opponent. Now, this is a pretty smart idea here from Aerovit. He's going to go ahead and tower rush the speed creeps. Now, Gaunts, when you see this kind of, it almost looks like a stinky cloud uh, around these creeps, that means they're infested. When they're infested, they die and they spawn a fiend. And so this makes it a lot easier with your Gaunt, uh, and in this case with your Brute as well, to mow these down, get the kills quickly, and then you can go clean up the other creep camps. And so that's what we're seeing right now. Uh, over here, we're seeing kiting from these two gaunts over at the siege camp. So this is uh, already, you know, two very different ideas. And whoa, structures being built over here as well. This is already really, really interesting game here. We've got this vision camp about to be wiped out. You can see the fiends are beginning to accumulate in high number. Um, it was, in fact, Iron Vault and Conclave and double... Oh, sorry, triple Conclave. Wow. That's really interesting. Okay, I don't think I've actually played against anybody who's gone Triple Conclave or... Uh, and actually, sorry, it's even Quadruple Conclave. So this is wild. Now, keep in mind, Gaunts are very, very squishy units. They're uh, integral to, um, you know, these big fights that you have because the Infest allows you to get a lot more units out. We're going to have a flank come in here, and with a Brute and a couple of Fiends, these Gaunts are going to be in a lot of trouble. Keep in mind, it is still a high number. Some of the Fiends actually stuck behind the Gaunts over here on the side, and they do end up taking this. The Siege Camp, though, is captured, which completely messes up the, the situation here for Gil. Gil in a lot of trouble, a lot of chaos happening right here in the middle of the map. Keep in mind, the structure is extremely important here for Gil to keep alive. Um, over at the top, that siege camp has not been taken yet. It does seem that uh, time was on uh, Aerovit's side over here. He did manage to push in. He is starting to close in on this position. You know, generally, at least as far as I understand it, one Brute is always handy to have in the mix when you're fighting some Gaunts. Just if you have some kind of a meat shield. Uh, thank you for the raid, author Valentine. Welcome, viewers. We're in a cast right now. Um, and so that structure falls. And uh, that is going to be that. I guess the game is actually that short. So crazy base trade there in the middle of the map. Um, but at the end of the day, I mean, if you go for triple Gaunt, um, sorry, triple Conclave, so that's Gaunt's coming out along with the fourth one. I think the idea is pretty cool, but the fact that he actually got the snipe here on the siege camp, got the kill on that final creep, and then turned the catapult against those Gaunts was probably what won him the game. Pretty insane action-packed game. Only 3 minutes and 45 seconds. Let's go back a little bit. Okay. Oh, hold on a second. I actually have to restart the... Uh the replay here. We'll just do that real quick. There's a bug where if you try to rewind, it won't, um, it will not respawn some of the units. So it's, it's kind of a funny thing. Obviously that's going to be fixed later on. So yeah, let's get to this fight that happened. 
And again, on a map like this, there's a lot of different ideas that can be at play. Keep Notice, by the way, this imp does tear down the center and then makes this conclave over here, which I actually did not catch until later on. But it looks like the snipe was the... Um, the crazy play here. Honestly, both these creep ideas are pretty different. Um, I've had limited experience playing on this map. This map is only just now in the, in the latter season um, that I've been on. But you can see with the vision camp being killed up here, this is what allows strategically for the ambush down at the bottom. Had the vision camp not been killed, so it's a smart move to get rid of this camp first and then uh, rush over here. But I also think there's a little bit of a, a tech imbalance here. I think pure gaunt isn't good. I think if you're going to make this third conclave over here, you should have at least had one vault or something to make one to two brutes to tank. But at the same time, I don't know. Can you mathematically support four conclaves? Maybe not, but I guess you could also choose to make a few gaunts out of the first three buildings and then focus more heavily on production over here. So let's watch this as it goes down. So these two chicken creeps, and what is this? A, I guess like it looks like a moose with a, a bowl over its head, like it's been to the vet or something. Uh, it looks like this should be an easy win here. And I'm gonna slow this down just a little bit so we can watch this and see what exactly goes down. So he gets the kill on that. Nobody's actually ran in. Nobody's actually taken the siege camp. Even when I was casting this, I was talking about the fact that these two fiends are in the back and they can't quite get... I, I think this area might actually physically be blocked off with these doodads on the map. And so there really isn't that much, especially with the brutes. It looks like this is an A move here, so these are actually defaulting onto the structure. This is one of the things... This is not even a Stormgate thing. This is just something you got to watch out for if you're in an RTS. He comes forward. Now, this is this is the play. This is crazy. Look. Bam! He gets it at the last second. But now the siege camp has been won over. And look at this. Completely nukes the gaunts. This was five gaunts over here. Another gaunt goes down. We see it ragdoll to the side. Gaunts that are popping out of here are getting isolated uh, by that. And it's the siege camp and the fact that really Gil had done all the hard, hard work there to open that up is what allows this to close out. So kind of a crazy, interesting interaction right at the start of the game. Again, it's always fascinating to look at these different um, strategies or tactics that are used early on, what works, what doesn't, and um, try to figure out what is the best way to approach the game from there. But that was a really cool maneuver. Um, Definitely not like a planned out move as much as a, a noticed opportunity there. Um, and that is you know, basically what cost skill the game here. I do think also just for some further analysis, probably not the play to just go conclaves here. Um, we have seen double conclave into expand. I've messed around a little bit with single conclave, but I'm losing um, faith in that the more games I play. Um... But yeah, great game. Very cool stuff. A very short game, by the way. So, uh, you know, sometimes you get games that go on for a very long period of time. We've already casted some of those. This was a game that was three minutes and 45 seconds. And so, um, very cool to see. Thank you so much for watching. Again, please like and subscribe. I've got a little shirt that says Gosu on it. This, uh, you can get this at Tasteless Threads. Dot com, my merch site. We've got a whole bunch of RTS, esports, gaming-related stuff that I think uh, I think everybody would find at least one thing on there they would enjoy. So please check that out for me. Um, join me on my Twitch channel where I cast these games live. And uh, thank you so much for taking this time to hang out with me. I hope you have a great day. And I hope to see you uh, in a future video as well. Bye-bye.